Hi guys, welcome back to the clubhouse. I am so glad to be with you today. Before we get started on our last story about humility, we're gonna start with the chat pack. So I've got two questions for you this week. The first one is, what is your favorite nickname of someone that you personally know? What is your favorite nickname of someone you personally know? Uh, mine is a nickname that Hazel has for Joseph. Uh, she likes to call him the Tootie Duty King, and I think it's hilarious every time. <laughs> See, can't even say it without laughing because it's just great. Four year old humor, you know, it's the best. The second question I have for you guys this week is what is your favorite Girl Scout cookie? This one's tough. Um, I think for me, oh, guys. I don't know that I can just choose one. I'm gonna go with Samoa's. It's Tagalongs are right up there. I am having a, a hard time picking between those two. But anyways, hope you guys had fun answering those questions as a family. I would love to know some of your answers. So if you guys have been watching these videos and you've been answering these questions together, um, I would love for you guys to share some of these things with me. So you can either comment on this video below or you can have your parents send me your answers either way, but I would love to get to know you guys a little bit too. Uh, it's not very fair that you guys get to hear all of my answers uh, and I'm not hearing any of yours. So please share those with me. So today we are finishing up our conversation on humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. There are many times in our lives where we have to decide if we are going to try to get our way or let it go and let somebody else go first. We can always look to Jesus for this example of humility because the way that he lived his life basically turned the world upside down. Today, we're picking up where we left off in God's big story. It's right after Easter when Jesus dies, is hung on a cross, and the empty tomb is found by some of the disciples. This week is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to need your help to tell the Bible story. This is something that we do in the clubhouse all the time. I love to involve you guys as much as I can. So even though you can't physically be with me today, I still need some help. I need some audience participation. So I made some cue cards and at different points throughout our Bible story together today, I'm going to hold up these signs and I would like you guys to either do or make the sound effect that it says. So to make it a little bit easier for you, we have two different colors. We have black and we have green. If the word is black, then that means that you should act out or do whatever is on that cue card. If it's green, then that means it's a sound effect I would like you guys to do to help me tell the story. So I think before we get started, we should probably practice a little bit, don't you think? So I've got some examples, some practice ones that we can kind of go through together. You guys ready? This is the first one. I've been around you guys. This should be really easy for you. Excellent, a little bit louder, okay? Next one. <gasps> guys, I could not be prouder. We have one more. Oh yeah. weren't any dubstep dance parties happening in Jesus's day, but I just wanted to see if you guys were all in on the cue cards, and I trust you, so I think we're ready to get started. We pick up our story right where we left off when Mary goes back to the disciples to tell them about the empty tomb. Peter and John run back to the empty tomb to see if what Mary was saying was true. They get there and all they see are these strips of cloth that Jesus was buried in. They have no idea where his body is. They had just seen their friend die on the cross and now his body is nowhere to be found. That same day, two more of the disciples were on their way to a place called Emmaus. It was a long journey about seven miles away. And you have to remember, this is during Jesus's time. So they didn't have uh, like cars or bikes, uh, rollerblades, my new personal favorite, 
or anything like that. So it's gonna take them a long time to get there. And I'm sure they encountered some different things on this long seven mile trip. You guys ready for some sound effects? They might have seen some donkeys. So since it's green, make this sound effect. Great job. Or they could have seen some stray dogs. They might have even seen, <laughs> I just realized I cut this off. That's kind of a problem, but you know what it is. They might have even seen some families with some crying children. As they were walking and talking along the road, they noticed this man coming up next to them and keeping pace with them as they walked. It seemed like some random guy had just joined in because he was walking in the exact same direction as the two men. So they decided to start talking to him and this man was actually Jesus. But God kept his appearance hidden so that the men did not realize that it was actually Jesus who was walking and talking with them. So as they're walking, Jesus, remember, they don't know that it's him yet. Jesus asks them, what are you guys talking about as you walk? One of the two men, Cleopas, tells Jesus that they had just watched Jesus die. That he told them all about how the rulers and a high priest had told lies about Jesus and had Jesus sentenced to death. They told him all about how he had died on the cross and that there were even rumors that he had come back to life. Their faces were kind of sad as they told Jesus this story because they weren't sure at that point how the story was going to end. Jesus responds and says, what, what are you talking about? So we're gonna read what Cleopas has to say back to Jesus during this exchange. We're gonna be in Luke chapter 24 and we're gonna start at verse 18. So make sure you get your Bibles out, turn to Luke 24, I'm gonna read verse 18. One of them was named Cleopas. He said to Jesus, are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who does not know? Don't you know about the things that have happened here in the last few days? Cleopas is basically saying, dude, have you been living under a rock? How are you in Jerusalem and you don't know the events of the last few days? We're gonna see what Jesus has to say. This is verse 19, so keep reading along with me. What things, Jesus asked, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet. He was powerful in what he said and did in sight of God and all the people. The chief priests and rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death. They nailed him to a cross, but they hoped that he was the one who was going to set Israel free. Also, it is the third day since all of this happened. So they start to tell Jesus all about Jesus. <laughs> they tell him all about his story and even about his ministry on earth before he died. They continue to walk and talk with Jesus and Jesus actually starts to tell them some of the things that he knows. And he says, guys, have you not heard the scriptures? And he goes back and he starts sharing with them scripture after scripture that shares about God's plan. God's plan was so much bigger than any of them could have possibly thought. So Jesus tries to help these two men as they walk along the road, piece all of these scriptures together to help them understand that God's story is really, really big. That his plan from the very beginning was to send us a savior and that savior was Jesus. So we know that their journey was about seven miles, which remember took a long time. We have no idea how long Jesus talked, but the Bible says that he continued to talk and share the other scriptures with them. Could you imagine what those guys must have been thinking to hear this guy just come along and join your journey and then he starts telling you things that you didn't even know? They were probably pretty confused, I would have to say. But they finally get to Emmaus. They get there and they really want to keep spending time with this man who is Jesus. So they try to convince Jesus to stay with them just a little bit longer because it's starting to get really late. They agree to sit down and have a meal together. So Jesus starts cooking for them and as he passes them the bread, they realize that it's Jesus. As soon as he broke 
bread with them. How beautiful is that? Something that Jesus did so many times while he was with them. They realize that it is Jesus. And as soon as they realize it's Jesus, poof, he disappears. Could you imagine you just spent time with Jesus? You didn't realize it was Jesus. You finally realize that it's him and then he's just gone. They were so excited to get back to the disciples and tell them what was going on that they actually left immediately and went back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples what had just happened. Can you imagine? They just walked seven miles. They walked seven miles, finally sat down for a meal and to rest, and were so excited that they had to go back immediately and share with everyone else what had just happened. They get back to Jerusalem and they start to tell the 11 disciples everything that had just happened. How they had met this man on the road to Emmaus. They didn't know who he was, but he had all kinds of knowledge about God's big in his big story. But he was able, they were able, to share with them that Jesus was truly alive, that they weren't just rumors, but that he was actually living. I think that deserves some applause. The disciples were starting to understand just how big God's plan really was. It was so much bigger than what they could have thought or imagined. And that's what I want you guys to remember today. There is always more to discover about God's plan. God has had this plan from the beginning that he wanted to have a relationship with us. And so he sent Jesus so that we could actually have that relationship. It doesn't matter how old you are or how long you've been following God. You can always learn more about God's big plan and what that means for you. So while you guys are at home, I want you guys to take advantage of the extra time that you have. Pray as a family, read the Bible as a family, and talk about Jesus and what he means for your life and how you are invited to be a part of his one big story. I wanna show you guys our Bible image for today for the, our wall. And that's the two men on the road to Emmaus with Jesus. How special to have this uninterrupted time with Jesus and to learn so much from him, even though you didn't realize that it was Jesus. Sometimes humility means that you have to admit you don't have all the answers. I know that's tough. It can be hard to admit that, but that's okay. We don't have to have all of the answers. Jesus is there to help us. The same way that he helped these two men piece together aspects of God's big plan. There is always more we can learn. There's always more that we can figure out about God through reading the Bible and through praying. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for the reminder that your story is so much bigger than us. God, sometimes we get so wrapped up in ourselves and our own lives that we forget how big you really are. Help us to remember that there is always more to discover about you, about your plan. God, we're so thankful for the small part that we have. And even though it might be a small part, it is so important because you can do so much through us. As we wrap up this conversation about humility, God, I pray that you would continue to show us how we can put others first. I had such a great time with you guys today. I can't wait to see you back next week. Bye.